Alex, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Billy trousers from Bella Loves Patterns, as promised. Uh, but I also got a little bit carried away this week and I have also made the Smith Smith <laughs> woven jacket from Style Art Patterns. So a couple of things to show you, a couple of other bits and pieces towards the end. Um, but first of all, I want to show you my trousers because I really love them. They are yeah, the thing I've really enjoyed making most in months. Um, and as you can see, or I hope you can see, they are a wide leg trouser, relatively fitted around the, the top, uh, but not tight, you wouldn't say tight. Um, they have, yeah, so they just drop away at the legs. They have a welt pocket at the back um, and pleats at the front. And I have, yeah, as I say, I've absolutely adored making them. I haven't had so much fun making a pattern since the last Bella Loves pattern, uh, pattern, saying the word pattern a lot, uh, that I made, which was the traveller coat. Um, and sort of for the same reasons, because the instructions are fabulous if you really want to get your teeth into something, if you really like or a few sort of tailoring type techniques that are that are sort of as close to tailoring as you're ever going to get with a home um, dressmaking sewing pattern. Uh, yeah, she's clearly had experience in that industry and um, has brought it to us, so it's really, really nice. Um, so yes, they uh, are pleated at the front and they also have a centre front well, and centre back uh, crease, which is optional you don't have to press that in um, but one of the pleats I'm really hoping that the Sun isn't getting in the way here uh, one of you've got two pleats at the front and this one the one nearest the center front actually goes into the center front pleat there uh, crease there um, so I think actually you kind of do need them um, why is it there are always threads um, yeah so really really nice finish at the front you've got the side pockets I was a little bit concerned about how this pattern was going to work for me um, this style of trouser is very much around at the moment they were around in the summer in linen you know lovely wide leg trousers um, and obviously continuing on every single shop you look in every single blog you know you name it they're all talking about wide leg trousers um, and I love them because you know just because something's on trend doesn't mean to say we have to follow it um, I love them but I was nervous about pleats at the front it's a style that I've avoided for a while because historically what I found was that the point at which the pleat would open up is the point at which my tummy is at its largest and it would often the fabric would kind of splay open a little bit more than perhaps on somebody who didn't have a tummy and would really highlight the part of me that I least want highlighting or that I don't like um, so I always felt that it would look like my tummy was sort of pushing the fabric open so for years I have only really gone with things that are flat fronted and avoid pleats or tucks or anything like that for ages um, so I did make a toile because I wanted to see I could see that the instructions were quite involved and I thought right let's see whether you're really going to wear these before you go you know into all of that um, so I toiled a size 14 and uh, but graded up to a size 16 for the waist and had a 16 for the waist band um, which is fairly standard for me and of course typically the toile worked beautifully um, isn't that always the way with toiles um, so yes and I didn't feel that I had the issue with the pleats so I don't know if it's something to do with, with the way it's been drafted who knows but anyway no pleat splaying issues um, so I'm really really happy with how they look um, yeah, I really like how they look. I love the way the waistband is. There is a, um, what I'm going to do, I think, 
is I'll nip indoors and get a pair of jeans on or something and show you the insides because the insides are really rather lovely um, because you have lined pockets and the fly front is lined and there's some binding. Um, but what I quite like is that there is a button and a hook and eye, here comes a train. Um, so you've got the hook and, not hook and eye, hook and bar fastening and the button, but the button is on the inside of this waistband so you don't see it and if anybody has a slightly tricky uh, sewing machine for making buttonholes that's great because even if your buttonhole is not looking beautiful it's not sort of public facing um, I really like that and I just feel it gives a really nice sleek front um, yeah really nice appearance um, obviously you've got belt loops as well uh, and as I said, you've got the welt pocket. I have to say, this is not my best welt pocket, but they are a total pain to unpick. And um, I just thought it, it was okay, it was good enough, but yeah, not my best work. Um, and also what's really nice is rather than just the standard single dart at the back, you've got two darts and that gives a really nice shape. I think. Um, somebody like me, who typically struggles with that centre back seam on trousers, because I've definitely got a sway back, I end up with a sort of bridge across here. My waistband becomes like a bridge across the dip in my back. Uh, I don't have that at all. It was one of the things I thought I might have to deal with on the toile, but no, none of that. And I think that's partly because of the two darts and partly because um, it is a curved waistband, which is always really good as well. Um, so yeah, beautiful, beautiful instructions, quite involved, um, but I think I did it absolutely by the book. If um, there was any hand tacking, I did the hand tacking, um, instead of thinking, oh, I'll just pin it, it'll be fine. Um, no, I did absolutely everything, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it, but some of those things, you could skip, um, yeah. So maybe next time I might make it um, without binding things and just overlock instead. But um, it's quite nice to do it properly for at least one pair because I think I definitely will be making more pairs in future. Um, the other thing that's really nice about this pattern is that she offers it in two lengths, which I think when you've got something where how the leg is falling, how the fabric is falling is really important. So one is a uh, is designed for I think it's five foot three, and the other is five foot seven. I'm five foot seven, so obviously I went for that one. Uh, I did take a little bit off the length. It's got a really nice chunky hem. I think it's about five centimeters, which I like. A, I feel it just gives a, a kind of quality feel, doesn't it? When you've got a nice chunky hem. Um, but I did, uh, that was the one bonus of doing the toilet, is that being able to see what length I wanted. So I did take about three centimetres off. Because this sort of thing is a bit tricky with length, isn't it? Because they're going to look really odd if they're not super long. But at the same time, um, I'm going to be wearing these in the autumn and the winter when we have the joy of rainy streets in, the, in this part of the world. Um, and I don't want to get soggy hems. So I have just ended mine just above where the sole of my shoe is. And these loafers are quite chunky. So um, it means I can only ever really wear them with a chunky soled shoe, but I probably would anyway. Um, and I'd wear them with trainers, but I've got equally chunky trainers. And I'm really, really pleased with my fabric choice, obviously I'm hoping you can see it's this sort of hmm, forest green colour, maybe more than a bottle green, um, and I really like this colour, but also the fabric. So my fabric I bought locally at Leon's and it's a wool viscose mix with about 5% elastane. So the pattern is not designed for stretch, it's designed for a woven fabric, but I figured that a tiny little bit of stretch would be fine. 
just quite nice and comforting to wear really um, so long as I didn't stretch it at all and I was sewing it which obviously I, I didn't do um, but yeah really nice obviously designed for wools and um, I would want something with a little bit of drape I mean you could make them out of something like a drill but I don't think you'd want it to be too thick I think it does need to have some kind of drape so sort of suiting suiting fabric is really the right thing if you wanted to make a suit she does have a fabulous looking blazer pattern um which would work really well and i was i was really tempted to knit back to leon's and buy some more of this fabric and make the blazer but i've talked myself out of it um because i've actually got a couple of blazers that I wear fairly regularly and um, one is grey and one is like a sort of camely colour and I thought do I really need it to look like a suit I don't go to work in an office or anything like that I don't know that I'd actually wear it so um, I'm, uh, I'm torn I really want to do it but there are other things that I want to make right now um, so yeah lovely 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 pattern um, now, I've made a note of the size range. Okay, UK 6 to 22. Um, so, not massively inclusive, but there's a bit of wiggle room there. As I said, mine was largely a size 14, except for at the waist. Um, yeah, really, really, really like it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my Smith woven jacket. And then when I've done that, I'll nip indoors and take these off and bring them back out to show you the insides. And um, so hang for that. Right, Smith woven jacket. Here it is. Um, I will put up an image of the pattern. Um, I have made this out of some fabric that I bought from Lady McElroy. I think I told you that recently I ordered some fabric. Oh, that's right, it was for when I went to the wedding. I ordered the fabric direct from Lady McElroy here in the UK and that they are really regularly sending offers. There was one just yesterday for two days, 20% off everything on their website. So if you like Lady McElroy fabrics, it's really worthwhile, and you're in the UK, sorry everybody else, um, it's really worthwhile ordering from there or signing up to their newsletter because there are definitely a lot of deals to be had. Um, this fabric I really like. I'm going to try and get some close-up images so you can see. I know it looks overall like a sort of browny, olivey, green colour, but it actually has almost like, oh, not a two-tone effect, but it's got a number of colours all interwoven in there. So there's red and green and all sorts. I literally finished this yesterday, so if it's not pressed quite right, that'll be why. Um, and I think there's a chalk mark on one of the pockets, so literally hot off hot off the press um, yeah so I love these big pockets at the front and this that's just a bit concerned because of the sun um, but this sleeve tab that goes into the cuff here um, and I really like the kind of swingy nature of it and this pleat at the back or this inverted pleat at the back um, I think it's a really nice, really nice detail um, and I was hoping that being cropped um, that it would work with wearing these wide leg jeans because jeans, trousers, I'm not sure how often I would button it up but I like also it's got a concealed placket which is always a favourite for me just again just in case uh, the buttonholes go to pop it doesn't really matter because they get hidden away. Um, and a collar. So it is a proper collar with collar stand, which um, I would be a bit careful of using any fabric that's too thick, because I think trying to get the um, corners here on your collar stand on anything too thick would be really difficult. So I wouldn't make it um, in like a coating weight fabric. I think that would be way too much. Um, I mean, certainly in something for spring, summer, for those of you in Australia and New Zealand, um, you know, like a linen or a drill or something like that, would be really nice in linen. Um, I think it would be great. Um, but I'm quite happy with this. 
This fabric is um, a blend of wool and oh, toline. I think it's called it's quite an old-fashioned polyester. But one of the advantages of it is that it was often used. It's not waterproof per se, but it's kind of semi-water repellent. So I'm hoping that that means that if I do get caught in the rain, it won't be too, you know, it won't just soak it all up. Um, it's a little bit itchy, but not too bad. Um, yeah, really, really like how it looks. Um, I made a size 12 um, in this one, and I'm really happy with how it fits. How the shoulders, yeah, shoulders are pretty spot on. Um, Interestingly, because uh, anybody who sews will know that the instructions from Stylark are always very, very sparse. And I'm not sure if this is a one-off or whether I just haven't made any of the more recent Stylark patterns, because this one was only released in the last few weeks. Uh, but this had far more detailed instructions. They actually ran over three or four pages, which normally with style art instructions it's about a paragraph uh, they do always provide a diagram with which is sort of color coded so you know which seams you know go where which I always find to be really useful and um, to be honest I've not really struggled with style art instructions because I'm reasonably experienced but um, yeah if you're a beginner they're normally tricky so yes these ones were much more detailed they still are a little bit wanting, I would say. There were still things that I thought, mm, that's not massively uh, well explained to somebody that hadn't, you know, done any of the techniques before. Um, I completely ignored the way they told you to do the yoke at the back. It was a sort of semi-burrito, um, and I did my usual burrito method of which I have a little video demonstrating how I do that, so I'll link that. Um, but yeah, things like that. Uh, silly little niggles. For example, with the concealed um, placket here, on the button band, there was another buttonhole that should have been higher up between my top button here and, you know, where it ends. But because they tell you to do the buttonholes at the very end, once it's already been sandwiched in between the collar stand and down the bottom, I actually couldn't get my sewing machine in that high up to do the buttonhole, which could have been very easily um, resolved by doing the buttonholes first. So there were just a few little niggly things like that. Um, on the inside, on the hem, um, there were no no mention of turning um, turning the raw edge under, so I overlocked it, and then later on I regretted that and thought actually if I'd turned it under, it would have looked a lot neater. Um, but it just didn't mention it really at all. So also not helped by the fact that I didn't have the best matching overlocker thread. Um, yeah, so I would have turned that under just to make it look a bit neater and I just didn't think at the time um, so just a few little niggles I just think there are much improved no shadow of a doubt but not as detailed as a lot of the instructions that we're used to but yeah I really love the details on that sleeve um, and I think making a spring one would be great when we get to that time of year which is a long way off now for us in the UK Right, I'm going to nip indoors and put something else on so I can show you the inside of these trousers. Okay, dungarees on. They're the ones from Helen's Closet. Can't remember what they're called. Um, and I'm hoping, because the light's being a bit peculiar here, that you can see. Um, I have clearly made a mistake in that my interfacing, that's the black bit there, um, I interfaced this section here, but I also had it over here where it was not necessary. So, yeah, but as mistakes go, there are much worse ones to be made. Um, but you can see how, hopefully you can see how lovely it looks. So the pockets um, 
are bound. So you create the pockets and then you add the bias binding around them. Um, the fly front is lined as well and the back pocket also lined and then this centre back seam has got binding. I really hope this light isn't messing me around as does the waistband. Um, so yeah, it's really, really nice. And then this is what I meant about the button and the buttonhole. So the button is there, but it's on the inside as is the buttonhole. So if you mess it up, not easy to do with one hand. If you mess it up, it's not the end of the world. And then some chalk marks. Um, and then there's your fly front with the hook and eye and obviously your zip. Um, so it's all super, super lovely inside. But as I said, you could, well, I'm not sure if I did say, uh, but you could just as easily, if you were in a hurry or you couldn't be bothered with all of that, just overlock those pockets. You could overlock your seams rather than binding them. You don't do that with the side seam. Um, that's just overlocked as usual. So you could just overlock that, you could even just overlock your waistband. So um, it's nice to do it by the book, but also plenty of opportunity to just ignore all of that if you wanted to. So a couple of other little things that I just wanted to show you before I head off. Uh, one is that, uh, yeah, little trick that I have that I don't think I've ever shown you before and I've done it a couple of times. So these are a pair of pyjamas pyjama bottoms, they're pretty ancient, they were bought from Bowdoin and they had a standard waistband with elasticated with a tie on it and they have been pretty uncomfortable for as long as I've had them because they've got quite the kind of low rise and um, you know I find that really uncomfortable. They get brought out every winter um, and I find myself constantly hoiking and then I remembered my little trick because I've done this on pyjama bottoms before. So I whipped off the waistband, unpicked it, and I have replaced it with jersey ribbing. And all that is, is you know when you buy ribbing and it's in a tube, so here is the remaining piece. So it's a tube of ribbing. So all I've done, I've not had to cut you know, cut it and join it at all, is taken a piece, you know, I've measured out twice the depth that I want, folded it over, and then you can, you know, stretch out the ribbing to meet your woven fabric. In my case, I did add a little buttonhole at the front, and then I put back in the same elastic with um, a velvet, ribbon on it which is seen better days because as I say I've had these for quite a long time but yeah might as well reuse it rather than throwing it away and now they are a lot more comfy to wear because it's all soft and jersey and stretchy um, and because they're that much wider or that much deeper I'm not struggling with the rise anymore so yeah and then a lot of us have this stuff just knocking around. I just picked up whichever one worked colour-wise-ish. Um, it really wouldn't have mattered too much because obviously they're pyjamas. So just thought I would tell you that because I worked out that I suppose you might need to just check that you can step into the, your tube of, sorry, take my shoes off, your tube of ribbing. Look, easy, even over the dungarees. I mean there's lots more space in there. Um, so yeah, good little top tip I thought I would pass on while I was doing it this week. Um, and then I've got some fabric to make some tops that I want to go with my new trousers. Um, thank you very much by the way for all the brilliant dress suggestions, including, I can't tell you how many of you suggested patterns, it's a dog tree, uh, I can't tell you how many of you suggested patterns that I already own. Honestly, sometimes I really do worry about myself. Um, but yeah, so I've got lots to kind of have a think about there and have a look because there are also some 
uh, patterns that I didn't know or I'd forgotten. So thank you so much, everybody. It's really, really helpful. Um, I may have already ordered some more fabric this week. So, um, yeah, I've got a few things to make. Uh, but this came and um, it is from Minerva and it is part of their bloggers network. So it has been given to me in exchange for a review on their website, but no, um, you know, obligation to mention it here. But I wanted to mention it because it is beautiful. Um, it's a little bit pricey, but it's really lovely, very much with um, winter and autumn in mind. It's their Isabella um, wool jersey. Um, it is clearly red, which is not my usual choice of colour, um, but yeah, I kind of, I know that the rule is that there isn't there some rule about red and green should never be seen, but I think the red would look good with the green and I figured if it's good enough for Gucci, it's good enough for me. Um, and yes, yeah, so obviously it's a jersey, so it's nice and stretchy, it's got really nice recovery to it. And I figured that with the trousers being that wide leg, I'd want to have some nice, warm, cosy tops that will be a little bit more fitted. So my plan was, and I'm still not sure about it, to make, uh, do you remember a little while ago, I made the newish Wayland or Wheeland vest or tank, that's what she calls it, a tank, doesn't she? from Elba Patterns and uh, I coincidentally had made a Jennifer Lauren juniper cardigan a year or two before out of the same fabric and they worked really nicely together as a little sort of two set situation and my plan was to do that but the tank is cropped that I've made um, and I don't think I'm going to be wearing anything cropped in the winter. Um, so I would make it and add some length to it. So my original thought was to do exactly that, to do another tank, a little bit longer, and a matching juniper cardigan, which would keep me nice and toasty and warm. I'm slightly doubting myself now because I'm slightly wondering if when it does get really cold, whether I will regret having made something that has no sleeves, that's sleeveless. So I'm going to have a little look around for some other tops. I may just make something very, I don't want to say basic, but the sort of core thing you have in your wardrobe, you know, like a round neck, long sleeve. There are loads of patterns out there. Um, or maybe I, I'm wary of anything with puff sleeves or anything like that because I find that they can be a little bit difficult in the winter when you're likely to be wearing cardigans or coats over things. It gets a bit bulky on the sleeve. Um, but yeah, it is really, really beautiful, beautiful fabric because it's got, um, I think something like, hold on, I've got a no, what is it? 20% wool, 72% viscose and a bit of elastane. So um, it is a little bit pricey, it's something like £24 a metre, um, although if you are a member of their craft club, you get a discount, don't you? Um, but it will keep you really nice and toasty and warm. And I'm sure, like lots of people, we are all thinking about what's going to keep us warm this winter, winter with the energy prices going so sky high. Um, so I'm very much trying to focus on things that will be warm and cosy. Um, so I figured it would be a really good one. And they've got a lot of really beautiful colours, lots of kind of jewel tones, as well as all the standard basics. So I guess where I'm going with this is uh, I'm asking your advice again, um, because if anyone's got uh, any really nice patterns for those kind of fairly fitted but um, wintery type tops that have got long sleeves, so as I said, not puff sleeves, but I'm just wondering if there's something with a little bit of detail or a little bit of something else um, that I might not have spotted. If not, then I will, um, maybe I'll do a polo neck. I don't know. I'm having a think about it, but it's really lovely fabric, so worth having a look at. So that is me done for the moment. I'm not sure when I'll be back. I'm halfway through making a skirt at the moment, um, so I'll see how I go. But yes, as always, 
Thank you very much for all your support and all your help and all your fabulous comments. I will see you soon. Bye bye.